Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. If my readings have been resonating with you, you might want to subscribe. I do all kinds of different readings on this channel. So, love readings, uh, sometimes financial readings. I get random messages for people that are subscribed. So, really appreciate the support. And please comment down below and share and like the video if it is resonating with you guys. Thank you so much. And I love hearing your stories too. But anyway, let's get right into it. So... What do the cards want to say? What do we want to talk about? King of Pentacles. Oop, I have the numbers reversed. It's okay. King of Pentacles. Two of Wands. Ten of Swords. The Hierophant. I'm hearing someone's waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's like two of wands is like someone that's like long-term planning, thinking long-term, and it's almost like they're seeing a ten of swords in their future. This person knows that you're manifesting a king or queen of pentacles. They know. I just keep hearing waiting for the other shoe to drop. So it's almost like this person feels like you're with somebody new or you're about to meet somebody new and they're having anxiety about it. Um, and they're getting kind of a little bit competitive, but it's almost like they're not, it's like, I feel like this person's not really taking action. They're having a lot of anxiety, but they're not really doing anything to try to win you back or try to commit. It's almost like, tell me, bear with me guys. Tell me about the Hierophant and the Devil. Queen of Cups. The Wheel of Fortune. Ten of Wands. Six of Wands. For someone I'm hearing, one of you wants to be polyamorous and one of you wants to be monogamous. That's not for most of you. That's for, for one specific person here. Six of Wands, Four of Swords. Tell me about the Six of Wands and the Four of Swords. They don't believe in commitment. They don't believe. So this person might have been hurt by their, because they're really considering commitment with you. I feel like this person's really going back and forth. Like they actually are considering commitment with you, but it's almost like they, they just feel like it ends in heartbreak. They're like, yeah, like they meditate on it. This person just goes in circles in their head. Like they really think about you a lot. They're really, they are thinking about commitment with you. And you're probably like, if you're watching other readers on YouTube too, you're probably getting a really mixed energy and it's probably confusing the shit out of you because you're probably like getting these readings where it's like, this person's terrified. They're done. Like they're running, they're, they're out. And then you're seeing these other readings where it's like this person loves you unconditionally. They want to marry you. And you're just like, what the hell is going on? And you're probably feeling it in your energy field too. Where you're like, is this person in? Is this person out? And this is what's going on in their headspace right now is it's like they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. They're waiting. They know that you're manifesting someone stable, someone loyal. It's not about stability. I mean, it's it's stability in terms of, I don't think you care if someone's mentally stable. Like, you know, it's society is messed up. No one's, you know, no one's fully stable, but you want stability in a relationship. You know what I mean? Like you want stability in the sense of you want someone that knows that they want you. You want someone that knows how they feel about you. You want someone that knows it's like you want someone that's going to pursue you. And it's almost like this person is like, they're trying to find out if you're, if you are dating someone, they're trying to keep tabs and see what you're doing. If you guys are moving forward, if the relationship is going well, if it's not going well, some of them are doing readings on you or they're paying somebody else to do readings on you because it's like they want to, it's like, I just see someone like checking in energetically. Like they're trying to like tune in and find out what you're doing, find out you know, like, like, who are you with? Where are you? Are you committing to somebody? Are you single? Are you going out? Are you having fun? They might be asking friends. It's like they're trying to get information is basically the energy I'm getting here. And I just with this energy, it's like they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. They're either they're either ex they're either wondering if you are with someone, they're wondering, like, again, if it's going to go anywhere, if you guys are going to commit to each other. Or if you're single, they just feel like you're 
opening yourself up to manifesting a king of pentacles or a queen of pentacles type. Like they feel like you're manifesting someone that's more stable. Um, I'm actually, let's see, I'm tuning into something here. Sometimes I get visuals, like that's part of, you know, channeling comes in so many different forms, but sometimes there's like visuals, but I see like a, like th this is a, I mean, never, there's no gender here. Even if I say it's female, if you know you're a male or this could be two men or two women, just take it as it resonates. Um, I feel like a lot of these readings, like primarily, you know, I think it's mostly women that I see commenting and resonating, but I think there's men here too. Because I did just get a visual of like a woman, um, like a, a dirty blonde, like she's got she's got like blonde hair, but it's not like platinum blonde. And I feel like she has like a drug or alcohol problem. Like I see her like being really self destructive with drugs and alcohol right now, like really crying. Um, she's very uh how do I describe this energy? I just, yeah, I just see someone that's blonde. I think she's kind of thin. Almost like, 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 what is that? Gangly or dangly or whatever, you, whatever you call it. Um, that's just for someone specific, but for, for someone here, it's, it's like, yeah, someone's like really, there's like a woman for, for a man here that's resonating with this reading. There's a, there's the a blonde woman who's really upset and freaking out. I feel like she was kind of abusive with this man though. I feel like she was very self-destructive and she really challenged him. And I think that she pushed him over the edge. Like, I think she really challenged him to see if she, if he would stay. And I think she might've like, she might've like cheated or she did something. She did something to make him see her in a pretty bad light. She was pretty, like he kind of sees her as dramatic and crazy at this point, honestly, but she's really upset. She's come, her energy is coming through. Anyway, let me get back to the, for the reading for the rest of you. Um, yeah, I just, I just hear that they're like waiting for the other shoe to drop. It's like, they're just, they're waiting for the other shoe to drop. They're waiting for, you know, for you to, to manifest this person. They, they're trying to keep tabs. They feel like any day now this person's going to come in, or if you're already with them, like the, the relationship might move to a higher level. Maybe for some, it's like, you might be dating someone and maybe your, your friends told them that like mutual friends or family told them that, you know, you guys look pretty serious. Like they might be, um, like maybe like they're thinking about proposing or they're thinking about moving in with you. And so this person is trying to keep tabs to see if this, if this uh, person you're with goes through with that, if they do propose, if they do ask you to move in, you know, or like maybe people like saw you at like a, like a club or like a social setting and, and people are telling this person like, oh yeah, she looks, you know, he or she looks really happy with this person. They look like they're really in love um, something it's like some, just, just, I just keep hearing waiting for the other shoe to drop, just waiting, waiting for keeping tabs, waiting, trying to find out something. Um, anyway, so I feel like this person, oh, and by the way, guys, please let me know, like, if you like the way that I'm reading, like if I'm, I know when I channel, I go kind of fast because there's so much information that comes through and there's so much to get out. But if you guys want me to slow down, like try to talk a little bit slower, if that's easier for you to process all of this, please let me know in the comments below uh, if you guys, you know, are okay with this, you know, the speed that I'm going. If you guys are, if this is a good speed for you guys, let me know, please. But um, anyway, yeah, I feel like it's it's really weird with this person because it's like they're not committing to you, though. It's like they're waiting for this to happen and they're terrified of this happening. They're really upset, but they're not really committing to you. I feel like they keep going back and forth. And that's probably why if you're tuning into their energy or watching, you know, YouTube readings, it's like you're getting all this different mixed energy from them and you're getting confused and you feel kind of lost. You're like, I don't know how this person feels because it's like they're upset. But I feel like when they think of commitment, it's almost like they're like, they're, they feel stuck because they're like, shit, like either they're going to be with somebody new or I have to step up and I have to commit and I have to, I have to be the one to give, to be in that King of Pentacles or Queen of Pentacles energy. I have to be the one to, to, you know, tell them I love them and make the commitment and start a life with them. And it's like, they start considering it and then they get in their head about things from their past. Cause with the devil card here, that's like, it can be like past traumas and wounds, but it's like the devil is about things that hold us back. Bondage, uh, defense mechanisms, toxic patterns, uh, karmic patterns, like subconscious beliefs, like things like that. Things that are kind of, 
keeping us stuck. And with the Hierophant here, because the Hierophant can be about traditions and commitment. It can also be a card, you know, considering the Hierophant represents like traditions and institutions, it can also represent marriage. And I'm seeing it as this person sees like marriage and commitment as like devil energy. They don't like they don't believe in commitment. They don't believe in true love. They're the type that thinks, you know, they're they're the type that thinks, you know, uh, life is hard. True love is a is a fairy tale. I'm hearing that song "Damaged" by Plum. That's a really beautiful song. If you guys like slow indie music, I would I would check out Plum. A uh, really good band. But anyway, I just I randomly heard that song because there's like there's a lyric in that song where it's it's a uh, true love is a fairy tale. I'm damaged, so how would I know? I feel like for some, this person loves you more than anything in the world, but they don't, for, for this isn't for everybody, but for some, because I, I was getting that energy of like, someone wants to be polyamorous, someone wants to be monogamous, but I feel like there's, I feel like it also, for some, there might be like different um, religious views or like political views, or there might be different uh like someone wants kids, someone doesn't want kids, someone wants marriage, someone doesn't, you know, if someone does want marriage, someone doesn't want marriage. It's like there's some kind of major difference for some of you where it's like this person wants to commit, but they're like, how am I going to, how are we going to get through that? I don't know how that's going to work. Um, but for the majority of you, and it could be both energies as well, but for the majority of you, I just get this energy of like, they think commitment is the devil. It's like they get in their head. They're really in their head right now. This person's really, you might even be picking up on their like, neurotic anxious kind of energy right now like they're just overthinking this person really over analyzes they just kind of they're very deep in thought right now and you might be picking up that energy because I'm getting this energy of like they think commit I just keep hearing like they think commitment is the devil <laughs> they think they think being committed is the devil they think it's devil energy they don't see love as a good thing they think true love is a fairy tale they think all relationships end. They think there's there's no chance of having a life partner. They they're very logical. Well, they think they're logical. They think they're logical when it comes to relationships, but it's actually just them being cynical. It's actually they're not really being logical, but to others and to themselves, it's like they it comes off as being overly logical. Does that make sense? Because it's like someone who it's like they think they're being realistic, but it, it's almost it's too imbalanced. There's not you know what I mean? It's like a more balanced perspective might be like relationships are difficult. They, they can take work. Um, it's not always easy. But, you know, if you really are in love with someone, if you really have that deep love, that that strong support, it can be worth it to build something. This is more the mentality that they have of like, you know, relationships just can't last no matter how much you love each other. It's always going to end. It's always it's always going to end in heartbreak. Someone's always going to cheat. Someone's always going to end up betraying me. They're thinking about their past relationships a lot right now, too. They're thinking about another time in their life where they wanted marriage and commitment with somebody and it ended in heartbreak. They they got left or they got betrayed or they got abused and they were so sure about that person. And so I think they're really in their head about that because they're like, if I was so sure about this ex, if I was so sure that that was true love and that I was going to marry them, how can I trust anything I feel? How can I trust that with with you that it's that it's actually true love, that it's actually going to last? You know, they just they don't think that good things can last for them. It's a very it's very sad. Because it's almost like, it's like they want to put this burden down. They want to put these toxic beliefs down, but it's like they keep getting, it's like they're being led to process this. They're being led to release this X. They're being led to release this devil energy, like this, this, um, like karmic energy, like toxic patterns, toxic beliefs, like things that, things, things that are holding them back, things that are keeping them stagnant, things that are, are blocking them from true love from happiness from living their best life it's like this limited perspective and their spirit guides are bringing this perspective and, and bringing their uh, past relationships into their awareness so that they can clear that energy so that they can do the shadow work because it's almost like this person is trying to kind of move forward and so 
their spirit guides are meeting that with like, okay, cool. Like you're finally on board with moving forward. We're going to bring this energy in so that you can clear it because this is what's been blocking you. This is the energy you've been suppressing. And we're going to bring it up now because you're trying to clear it because you want to move forward. You know, sometimes just a side note, but sometimes like when you ask for something, like when you let go and dive in and you ask for something, sometimes a lot of energy will clear. And that's honestly the, the point where so many people think that, you know, letting go and opening themselves up, opening their heart up, they, they view it as like a bad thing. Like, oh, I did that. And then I got hurt. And then I, but they're, what they're not understanding is when you're asking for, for true love or for a new job, a new career, uh, leveling up some kind of abundance or happiness, when you're asking for that in your life, you have to be prepared to let go of the things that are holding you back. And so, so many people ask for abundance and then when, you know, the shadow work comes up to be done, to, cl to be cleared out so that they can manifest that abundance and align with it, people get in that mentality of like, oh my God, like I let go, I surrendered to the universe and then I got screwed over. And it's, it's not like that. It's like, if you're asking for a new job, you might get fired from your old job. You know what I mean? Like you might have a falling out at work. Um, if you're asking for more money, you might, you might, you know be in a position like like where you're pushed to have to start your own business you know what I mean it's like it's like and then people get in that mentality of like oh my god like I asked for a new job and I got fired what the hell well it's like yeah because the job you were in was stagnant it was blocking you from finding that new career that you're wanting same with love it's like you're asking for true love you might go you know you might have a breakup with someone that's toxic you're asking for new friendships you might have falling outs with um old friends that are, are kind of, you know, trying to hold you back and, and, you know, jealous frenemy hater types. It's like, that's, that's a good thing though. It's, it's part of the process. It's that energy clearing to make way for what you're asking for. So that abundance can come in. And I feel like that's where this person is getting stuck because they are wanting true love. They don't believe in it. This person doesn't believe in true love. They don't, but they don't believe that they can be happy. They don't believe that they can d deserve happiness, but that's where they're getting stuck. It's like, they're, they're asking for this commitment with you. They're asking for, you know, true love. They're asking for more than what they're used to. And then their spirit guides bring them this energy. They bring their, their ex to their attention. They bring, you know, past relationships, childhood traumas, um, you know, shadow work, basically shadow work is what's coming up for this person. It's it's like, you know, limiting beliefs, uh, old feelings, things that they've suppressed, they're coming to the surface to be acknowledged to be to be healed to cleared purged. And it's like this person isn't understanding that this person is just it, it's like they're holding on to it. You know what I mean? Like, like, memories of this ex are coming up and how you know, this relationship didn't work. And instead of looking at it, acknowledging it, healing it, learning the karmic lesson there, uh, learning to listen to their intuition and their spirit guides more and trusting themselves more, it's, it's like they're just, they're instead of clearing the energy, they're just kind of holding on to those, those past memories. Like they're like, it's trying to, it's coming up, it's trying to be cleared out. Instead, they're like holding on to it. They're not letting it clear. They're not letting the, like the river's trying to flow and they're trying to build a dam here. You know what I mean? Um, they're asking for love and abundance. So it's like the, the flood waters, the floodgates are opening, which is a really positive thing. It's, it's, a, it's purging. It's, it's like a breakthrough. I'm hearing, I keep getting a lot of like, like channeling, like music and like salt, like songs and movies. And I'm hearing that song, let go by Fro Fro. It's a really good song. It's at the end of, um, garden state. That's another good movie. Um, I'm seeing like the end state of gardens, the ending scene of garden state where, uh, you know, he doesn't have his life together at all, but he's like, you know, where do like, this is life right here. Where do we go from here? Like, you got to just take that leap of faith. And then that song let go by Fro Fro is, um, it's like, there's beauty in the breakdown, like leave all your things behind. It's all going off without you. Excuse me too busy. You're writing your tra your tragedies, these mishaps that you bubble wrap when you, you've no idea what you're really like. Um, it's a really good song, but I feel like I'm channeling that song, Let Go by Fro Fro. And I'm channeling the end scene of Garden State. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I, 
I hope my like movie and song references are making sense to you guys. That's like part of how channeling works. I know not all psychics do that, but I mean, that is, that is channeling. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's tarot card readers, like anybody can read cards, but you, you know, to really be a good reader, you need to be able to channel too. You need to be able to, to get the story in and communicate with your spirit guides accurately. You know what I mean? Like it really helps. Um, anyway, yeah, it's like they just they just think commitment is toxic. So it's like they're holding on to that energy. They're not wanting to they're 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 so afraid of letting go. So it's like they're kind of starting to learn the karmic lesson, but then it's like they hold on to that energy. They're like, oh my God, but like what if what if this? What if that? What if I'm wrong again? You know, so it's like it's like all this energy is coming up to be purged and it's kind of starting to slowly be purged a little bit, but they're also kind of it's like almost like they're in a like a loop going around and around in circles. I think they're thinking about something specific. They might be some think some of them are thinking about something very specific that this ex did to them that was like abusive or toxic or like something cuz I just keep hearing like I don't want to be wrong again. I don't want to be wrong again. Like I was wrong before. I can't be wrong again. I can't like a control issue like oh my god, like I don't want to be like wrong again. You know what I mean? Like like what if it's the same as before? There's like so much just so much fear, so much anxiety here. But yeah, this energy is is coming up to be cleared. Um, they are wanting, I mean, they are wanting commitment, but it's like they're having to, it's like they want it deep down, but it's like, again, they don't believe in it. They don't believe that love can last. They don't believe that it's, it's like they think that, you know, if they let the burdens go, they're going to, you know, be successful and happy for a while and have this true love and be in this good high vibrational spiritual energy. And then the other shoes, this person's always waiting for the other shoe to drop. They're always expecting the worst. They're always expecting bad things to happen. They're, they're thinking they're like, I'm going to let go. I'm going to be happy. Everything's going to be great. We're going to, you know, move forward together. I'm going to be in my glow up and then heartbreak out of nowhere they're like they're they're afraid of that so it's like they're going they're just going in circles in their head they really need to clear this energy I mean I suppose it is a positive thing though that they are finally asking for um like they're they're acknowledging their deep desire for commitment whereas I feel like in the past I think this person was just like fuck commitment it's not for me it's not my thing and they were lying to themselves. And now they're actually being honest. They're like, okay, I like they're taking that step. They're taking that first step where they're like, okay, I do. I do want commitment with this queen or king of cups. I do. I don't want this to just be a karmic lesson or a cycle. I, I do want something long term here with this queen or king of cups. You know, like they're not lying to themselves so much anymore. They're still lying to themselves a little bit, but not nearly as much as they were in the past. So it's like that that first step of being honest is a really positive thing. It's like they're they're thinking like like I do I do want this commitment while long term with this queen or king of cups, but they're acknowledging it, but now it's like now they're in their head like oh, but how how is that going to work? How is that gonna, are we compatible enough? How it can love really last? Like how what if it's the same as before? It's it's like so that's kind of the energy that they're in where they're really doing um well, they're being called to do the shadow work. I don't, they're kind of partially doing the shadow work, but again, they're partially just kind of in this, this, this cycle, this loop there. They're really like in their head of, I'm getting like a specific thought that they're just like, they keep coming back to Like they keep going back and forth where they like address it and then they come back to it. They address it, they come back to it. They're like, they're like being kind of pulled out of their comfort zone and they're like, wait, no, like, like just, just back and forth kind of energy. Let's wrap this up. What else do you want to say about this reading? So that's kind of where they're at too, where it's like they're going, they're kind of in that energy and then it's like they go back to like, like not doing anything and just waiting and keeping tabs and like being behind the scenes and waiting to see if you end up with somebody or if you're already with somebody, like they're trying to find that out. And then because it's like they just go on this this loop, this cycle, like this, this, I don't know, like, I don't know if I can commit. I don't know if I can, I don't know if this will work. 
Let's get some final messages. Death, King of Cups. The Hermit. A lot of them are transforming. They are becoming, they're, they're, they are going through a transformation, becoming the King of Cups. Becoming someone who's emotionally available and open. Why the Four of Cups, though? Because the Four of Cups is a card of rejection. I'm hearing some of them want kids. This is for someone specific, but I'm hearing some of them like they want because the sun can be like a sun, like it can be like S O N. You know, some a lot of readers like read it that way occasionally, depending on the context. That's kind of where channeling comes in because the cards. I mean, there's like the the actual meanings of the cards, but it's like there's different ways to like interpret them, and it kind of like you see the story. Like when you're able to channel, it's like you can, you know what I mean. Like I might see it as as S O N was, whereas in another reading, I'm not going to see it that way. And in another reading, I might see it as like positive and high vibrational and like something like like you're the light of this person's life. And in another reading, I might see it as the truth is being illuminated. You know what I mean? It depends on the energy I'm feeling off it, the, the channeling here. Um, anyway, let's see. Some of them want a kid, though, and they're not acknowledging that they... And you, you don't want to, so if you're the one that's wanting to have kids and they're not wanting to have kids, this is for someone specific because I was getting that that was for, for one or two of you that was like the, the issue here is that incompatibility. Um, you don't want to have kids with somebody, if you're wanting kids, don't have kids with somebody who's on the fence about having kids. That's, that's a horrible idea. That's going to be, you can't talk somebody into having kids with you. I'm sorry, but you just, you cannot talk someone into having kids. That is like, that is a huge commit. That's the biggest commitment you're ever going to have is I, I can't, I mean, I can't imagine like the stress that comes with having, I'm, I don't have any kids. I cannot even imagine like the stress and anxiety that comes with having kids, the crying, the pooping, just all of that. That's a lot. Um, I'm going to get back to the main reading, but somebody needed to hear this part. But, but, you know, it, it's not like getting a dog or a cat. It, it's like, that's, that's such a huge commitment. And you don't want to, you don't want to talk someone into having kids with you. That it's not going to work because even if, because this person might kind of be on the fence where like, they kind of do want kids, but they're not sure about it. But I would still say like, you don't want to have kids with somebody who's not sure about it because that person's going to end up being an absent father or an absent mother and it's going to repeat. It's, it's like, it's, it's not, it's not going to be good for the, the child. You, you don't want to bring a kid into that world and do that to them. You know what I mean? It's like, cause if they're on the fence, then when they, you know, they're going to love the shit out of that kid when, when they're being cute and sweet. But what about when the kid's crying, when they're pooping, when they're screaming and, and waking them up at one o'clock in the morning? They're, they're going to, they're not going to like it. They're not, you know what I mean? Like they're going to have regrets and this kid is going to feel that this kid is going to feel like this kid is going to know that this person was on the fence about having them. You know what I mean? Like this person's going to, it's not going to, it's not going to go well. Don't, don't try to talk someone into having kids with you. You have to, you, someone has to, has to be a hundred percent sure about having kids. Like they really to, to, for this child to be healthy and successful and be happy and have a good life and not, not come from a broken home or be abandoned or, you know, go through all those traumas. Like if you, if you want to do the right thing and really do right by a child, like you need to have kids with somebody who, who is just, that's, they want that more than anything. And that's, again, this person kind of wants it, but they're not sure about it. That was just for somebody here, just a random side note, side message. So let's get into it. Let's get back to the, the main reading. Sorry. <laughs> I think that was the message. So let, let's let's wrap it up here. Any any final messages here? They know. So they're they can't deny things anymore. They can't really deny their feelings anymore, but they're still it's almost like they're still fighting it, but they're fighting it in a different way than they fought it before. So as before, I feel like maybe they, maybe they told themselves it was just friends or just sexual with you or, 
they denied their feelings or they tried to suppress things. They can't, I'm getting that, that things are coming to the surface. They can't suppress it anymore, but they're still kind of fighting it a little bit. They're still kind of holding on a little bit to what they're used to or their comfort zone. Cause it's like, they know that they have wish fulfillment with you. They're not in denial about that anymore. It's almost like they've acknowledged their feelings for you. They've acknowledged that they do want commitment with you. Finally, they've acknowledged like that they do love you. Um, but they, they're still like, again, like, what if we're incompatible? What if I just get hurt? Like, they're, they're still, they're still, they're still, um, like, they're not trying to tell them, they, they've accepted that they love you finally, but they're, they're not, um, like, they, they know how they feel about you finally, but they're still not, uh, like, they're, like, they're still not committing, you know what I mean? Like, they're still trying to, um, like they're not in denial, they're not lying to themselves, but they're still like, okay, yeah, I love them, fine, fine. I, I finally admitted I love them, I'm in love with this person, I do want to be with them, but you know what, I don't believe in relationships, or I've been hurt too many times, I don't think relationships can last, like it doesn't matter how I feel, like that kind of energy. Like they're not believing in it, they're not believing in their feelings. Some of them are going to try to come in with a sexual energy, and you need to watch out for that. Some of them are going to try to seduce you and you need to watch out. You need to make sure that they're coming in. Um, if they come in passionately, you need to make sure that they're, uh, don't let them try to find a loophole. They need, they need to come in, right? They need to make sure that they're actually committing to you. I mean, you need to make sure that they're actually giving you something solid. For some, you walking away from them is opening up their sex drive. It's almost like the the forbidden fruit must be tasted. Now that you're kind of distancing yourself and you're like, you know what? I don't think this person's ever going to love me. I don't think they're ever going to commit to me. I don't think they're ever going to step up for me. It's almost like it's like awakening this passion in this person because you're not doing the work for them anymore. Now they have to do it themselves. And so it's like they're getting, it's almost like they're getting back into like a sexual energy for some Yeah, it's like your turn to be fought for. Whether it's with someone new or with this person, it's it's your turn to be the one that's fought for. It's your turn to be the one that's taken care of. You've taken care of so many other people, including this person. It's your turn to 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 be taken care of yourself, to be strong and not get caught up in illusion or deception and only open yourself to someone that's going to, again, whether this person or somebody new, you're only opening yourself up to somebody who's really going to offer you commitment. Okay, building something together. All right, I'm going to put this out. Thank you guys for watching. And again, I really appreciate your comments if this resonates with you.